With that being said, we got our guests on the line. Um, I'll go ahead and let you do the honors since you basically uh, procured this guest. Oh, you don't see it. Okay, it should be a 312 number that we're looking for that's on the party. Th there we go. That's that's what I'm talking about. So with that being said, I will let you, uh, like I said, uh, Jersey World, do the honors and introduce our guest. Oh, it's no problem at all, man. And without further ado, Sports Critic fans, we definitely have the one and the only Mr. Illinois basketball from the 1987 um, year. I, I know we're, we're, we're dating ourselves, but <laughs> yeah. anybody from the Chicagoland area, you grew up in the late 80s, early 90s, you know this name, you know it well. Former Flying Illini, former Denver Nugget, Detroit Piston, my man, Chi-Town's finest, out of King High School, number 30, Marcus Liberty. Very gracious to join us tonight, man, on short notice. Marcus, we definitely appreciate it, man. Know you got a lot going on. You're just getting settled back in in the Chicagoland area. Thank you for joining us, man. How you doing tonight, bro? Oh, man, I'm doing great. Red, I appreciate it, too, man, the love that you just gave me out there in Memphis. So, but, yeah, I'm, I'm loving it, man, and I, I can't wait to, to chat it up with you guys. Well, let me let me ask the first question here, Marcus. My name is Drew Patton. You just actually added me as a friend today on Facebook and definitely want to appreciate that. And again, as uh, George definitely just said, we definitely appreciate you coming on the show. Um, going back to your flying Illini days, man, um, of course, I'm a native Tennessean. I'm a southern guy by trade, so I'm not from the Chicagoland area. But I remember watching you guys in the 89 Final Four. You guys caught my attention with having, you know, Kendall and uh, yourself and Kenny Battle and, and Lowell and just that team. Kind of talk about what it was like to play with a team of great players and kind of how you guys played. I think you may have been really the tallest guy. I mean, Kenny basically kind of played the power position, but you were kind of like the athletic wing. Talk about that team and what some of your fondest memories of that Final Four run. Well, I, I can tell you this. It was uh, a bunch of guys on that team from Chicago, so we pretty much knew each other uh, from playing basketball in high school and then playing in the pro-am. Uh, back here in Chicago. So once we uh, all got down to the University of Illinois down in Champaign, we all kind of gelled together because we all been playing against each other for, since high school. So it was really, really, like, sweet because we all knew we had one common goal, and that was to win. And so no matter who was scoring or who was dunking, uh, we all knew that if we played good together and played hard, that we can win just about every game if we play the way we're capable of playing. Now, Marcus, the thing that was so phenomenal about that team, man, I mean, you guys remember this one of the most talented teams of the era, you know, doing college basketball during that time. Is there one guy that you would say was the unquestioned leader of that group? Uh, it would definitely have to be uh, Kenny Battle. Uh, Kenny Battle was, he was a monster, man, and, and, a, and a lot of people didn't understand it until they played against that cat, man. And, and he was our engine. I mean, as he go, we went. Well, the big thing, too, about your career that is interesting, uh, and Jersey mentioned it, and we're speaking to my man Marcus Liberty, former um, Denver Nugget and Detroit Piston player and also a uh, member of the legendary Final Line. I, I want to ask you this, uh, based on with you coming out of high school, and, of course, you saw the era of the high school player making the jump out to Kevin Garnett that was kind of a little bit, uh, a little bit past your uh, era in high school. Do you think that with you being the number one player out of high school, would you have made the same decision to possibly make that jump if that was available to you? Yeah, I I, I think I would have because it, it was being mentioned back when I was coming out. I remember uh, at the time Doug Collins was the coach, and he basically put in the newspaper that this kid is ready to come out now. You know, speaking of me, but I didn't pay any. I didn't pay it no mind because really nobody was doing it back then. But a lot of people were saying, man, if you would have been the one that started it, you know, all over again since the since the Daryl Dawkins and uh, uh, and 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 uh, Moses Malone, those guys are coming out. You would have restarted it all over again. But you know, Kevin Garnett was the one that basically did it. But as I look back on it, I think I did the right decision by you know going to college and and, and getting that college life experience and and enjoying it because once you make that jump to the NBA. You have to completely transform, transform into a man immediately. I could believe that, ladies and gentlemen. We are being joined by the great Marcus Liberty, uh, Mr. Illinois basketball for the 1987 season, uh, one of Chicago's finest. Actually, just inducted as one of uh, the top 100 
in Chicago, Illinois High School basketball. So we definitely appreciate him taking time out to join us on the Sports Critic. I want to kind of get into that too, man, because it's something I kind of thought about. Being a Chicago area guy coming up, growing up a Bulls fan, of course, what was it like the first time you laced them up against your hometown Bulls playing against Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen? What was that like for you? You got any good stories for us? Hey, I tell you, it was it was really well. Just playing in the pro am, I you know I got an opportunity to play against Michael, but I never got an opportunity to play against uh, Scotty. And when when I played against Scotty Pittman, man, it was just this cat was just super long and super quick and super strong. Uh, but I can always tell you this: every time I did go play the Bulls, he they always made sure they had extra tickets. For me on the side because they know I had a big family and they uh, they did take care of me on that. But I think that was just to soften me up. So uh, <laughs> I could be looking at them like, well, Scotty and Mike took care of me on the ticket. So, <laughs> but it was it was all fun, man. Playing against one of the greatest, well, not one of the greatest, but the greatest basketball player in my eyes, Michael Jordan. And I, I'm forever grateful for lacing him up and being on the court at the same time with that man. And uh, it was unbelievable. And that was when he was in his prime. So. That was a great experience. Go ahead, Silent Party. You're welcome. Hey, uh, thank you so much for joining us, man. Uh, doing this show here with Jersey and uh, Andrew, it's it's really given me a perspective on uh, how how it how great it is to have good people around you. And so many people, so much negativity today. People asking it to di- dish dirt on folks or whatever. Can you tell us about who may have been like the greatest teammate, or not the greatest, but the, a teammate that you had that was really important that you probably your friends for life with and had a great impact on players and yourself included? Well, I can tell you this from just my experience, bro, hanging around. I I didn't have a big entourage, and, and I just see it nowadays that, you know, these kids, when they make it, what well, they superstars, quote-unquote, in, in high school, and then when they get to – that one year of college and then they jump to the NBA and then they have this big entourage and, and then you have to spend all this money on them. Uh, my entourage was very small. Uh, it was just two guys that I uh, pretty much grew up with, you know, all the way. And they, um, they still friends to this day. Uh, the ones that, you know, were just hanging around because you were in the NBA, they know where to be found. And my question to a lot of the athletes, especially these young high school phenoms who are touted as the best high school players, um, my advice would to, to to them would be make sure your entourage is tight. If you're gonna have them around you, don't make don't don't you don't want no people that's you know doing wrong things in your camp. Uh, if anything, you want to help them, pay for them to go to college, get their degree, so now they can help you run your business if you decide to jump in the business side of the world. Uh, if you if you choose that. A lot of times, it entourage just hangs around, goes to parties, drives the cars, and <laughs> get the ladies. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's it. We're speaking to Marcus Liberty, former second-round pick of the Denver Nuggets, spent some time with the Detroit Pistons, uh, veteran overseas, and, of course, a member of the famed Flying Illini back in the late 80s and Final Four team back in 1989. I want to ask you this. Uh, this is uh, the critic again. This is Drew. Um do you ever feel as though that maybe, just maybe, because I've seen documentaries on the, the running revs of uh, the 1990s or late 80s. We, we just saw the documentary with uh, Jalen Rose and the Fab Five that kind of caused some co- controversy. Do you think that sometimes your team uh, doesn't p- really get the props as one of the great uh, basketball teams of that era? Yeah, I think it would be great if uh, they come up with the Flying Illini uh, documentary because if you really look at that team, uh, we played against a lot of the top teams throughout that tournament and pretty much, you know, handled them. And we beat Michigan twice that year. Uh, so if you if you really want to see a good story, I think that would be a great story being told with the guy being myself, six eight, the tallest guy on the team but really wasn't the center playing small forward. So, right. And we all actually played above the rim. You throw the ball up, anybody can go grab it at any time. So very, very exciting group to watch. And for those of you guys tuning in late, we got a man, Marcus Liberty, former flying Illini, super standout, small forward. Speaking of a possible documentary, I mean, you got to have Dickie V you know, uh, doing that joint, right? Because he's the one that gave you guys the nickname, the Flying Illini. Now, just thinking about something you said earlier, man, do you think we'll ever see another collection of homegrown talent 
get the Illinois basketball program back to that type of prominence? It's it's going to be very hard, but uh, because Chicago back then when I was playing, everybody who was the number one high school basketball player in Chicago was going to the University of Illinois. Now you we have all these colleges coming in. You got your Memphis coming in, getting the D Roses, and uh, so it's going to be very tough. And you got Kansas. I mean Kentucky, Kansas coming in. I mean Kentucky just got our big kid uh, Anthony Davis. Uh, so it's it's. It's, it's free for all now. Anybody can come in there. But back when I was playing, they know. It's not even, don't even try to get in Chicago because those kids are going to the University of Illinois. Absolutely. I want to ask you this too, uh, you know, Marcus, because I think this is interesting because you did spend some time overseas uh, with several teams. And I was watching the NBA draft, and when I knew that you was coming on the show, I just really had to ask you this one question because you spent four years in the, uh, in the NBA, and then you, you go overseas and you have a great career as well. Talk about, in your opinion, you've seen what Brandon Jennings has done. You saw Jeremy Tyler. And I just think that this is coming down the road, down the pike. Do you think that more American kids would possibly look at a pro career overseas before the NBA or even maybe skipping college and just doing it? Because it just seems to me that the international prospect is maybe their career is titled a little bit better than a college career here in the States. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you on that, and and it also goes back to again your entourage, you know, your AAU coaches, uh, because a lot of times your AAU coaches are running everything for these young these young kids now, and back when I was playing it wasn't like that, but so yeah, I see a lot of kids who doing jumping uh, from high school and going over there making six figures, and and in Europe and playing basketball and trying to develop their games, and and one thing I would like to say is that. That's why you see the Dirk Nowinskis and 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 those guys being so successful over in the states because when they when they get over there in their country they drill them night in I mean morning to night and that's the thing that we are missing here in the states we have the talent but we don't have the fundamentals and that's what they drill those guys on over in Europe. Gotcha. Well, Marcus, let's kind of transition to this past NBA draft. I want you to put on your NBA uh, GM cap for a minute, man, and just tell me which player you would select and why if you had a choice between Kimber Walker or Jimmer for death? Oh, I would definitely, I would definitely select Kimber Walker. And the reason why he's a proven winner, he shows you that on day in and day out when he was playing on the court, I can't see why the kid slipped that low, even though they said it was a size, size doesn't matter. That kid has a lot of heart. And uh, Jimber, uh, I saw him play a little bit, not as much. Uh, kid is a great shooter, but, it's going to be hard, man, because a lot of a lot of those players in the NBA is going to be real hungry, and he's not going to be able to get that shot off like that. And, and, and to your point, I think that's that's some truth to that. But um, as a former player and having played in the NBA, do you see this as a weak draft in your opinion? Because a lot of the analysts they they actually believe that. Yeah, I I, I do believe that it is a, it is a weak draft, and the reason why you see so many European that got drafted. Uh, in the lottery, and then that wasn't that wasn't the case in the '90s and in the early 2000s, even. You know, so the game has definitely changed, and we have to we have to catch up. I mean, because uh, if we keep slipping like we are, it's going to be a European going to be the number one player picked in the draft eventually. That I, I can definitely see that happening. Well, Marcus, uh, we're going to let you run, man. I definitely appreciate you on short notice doing the show man and of course uh, before you run let us know what you're up to um you know let the, the fans out there that hadn't heard that voice in a while and, and seen you uh you know you know i guess from just from a, from a standpoint from a sports standpoint kind of let us know what you're up to man and uh when, where, we, where, where we can find you and what's going on with you well you know you definitely can find me on uh, facebook i'm always on facebook but uh what i'm doing now is doing a lot of speaking engagement going out talking to kids aau teams uh, just trying to get these kids on the right track, man, because a lot of kids want to make it into the NBA. They just don't know what it's going to take, and once they get there, how to stay. So that's the things I go out now and doing a lot of talking and speaking engagement, and plus doing some camps here and there. One-on-one is my thing. I like to develop these kids one-on-one. So that's basically what I'm doing right now until, you know, the bigger picture comes, which I want to take it on a national scale.